you can transform an ordinary image like this into an extraordinary one and all it requires is one simple step and that is editing and it really doesn't matter what editing software you have so in this photo editing tutorial i'm going to provide some pro tips on editing and reveal all the editing steps i took to create this image to make it look exactly like what i saw when i created it except for one small detail that i'll reveal at the end now in my free four hour photography class i lay out four keys to create amazing images and the first is to understand the limitations of your camera and how to use the camera settings available to help you fulfill your creative vision you also need to master light and composition and the final key is well it's editing now if you only apply three out of four keys you'll most often end up with a mediocre image because you skipped either applying spectacular light or maybe you composed the image poorly for example on a recent trip back from a florida work vacation i stopped in kentucky at cumberland state park to photograph this waterfall and i applied three of the four keys for amazing images so i applied the proper camera settings and i composed it for a well well composed image however since I was shooting in the middle of the afternoon, key number two was missing, which is the light was not that great. So regardless of the amount of effort I put into editing, I still end up with a mediocre image. Now, being impatient and not wanting to wait several hours for the sun to set, I went about searching, I think it's called the Gaia GPS maps for hiking and things like that for another photo opportunity and to my surprise there was another waterfall waiting for me on the other side of the river which is how i discovered eagle falls now i did everything right by applying the camera settings and composing the image to create what i had envisioned for this location when i first got there this is basically what i saw however the lighting wasn't all that great, but I was able to overcome that by applying specific editing techniques I'm now going to share with you. And again, it doesn't matter what editing software you use since most of them have the same types of editing tools available. So the first thing that I always do is I start with my global edits with the tonal value. So let's take a look at this virtual copy where I haven't applied my edits yet. So for me, I like to start with the auto button. Sometimes it does a great job giving me a good starting point. Sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't. So I'm just going to go through each one of these sliders and adjust the settings based on my creative vision and my editing style to create the image that I want to create. So the one thing that I don't like about the auto AI button in Lightroom is it always applies contrast vibrance and saturation and i hate adding contrast with the slider this way i'm going to show you two other ways to add contrast versus the slider that will give you better results and then oftentimes i'll have to tone down the vibrance and saturation in this case i believe i increased the saturation to plus 10. so i'm just gonna click here and type in 10. now originally i underexposed the image so that I could create or capture as much detail in the highlights as possible, which was mostly in the waterfall. And I didn't want a pure white area in the waterfall. So I had to underexpose to get those details or to capture those details. But this adjustment here is now too bright. So I'm gonna lower the exposure down to about half of that to around three quarters of a stop. Now, the exposure is adjusting the mid-tones of your tonal range. These other ones are targeting the mid-tone, or I should say the other ones here are targeting different parts of the tonal range on the outside of the mid-tones. So the highlights are right here on the left. We have our shadows, or I should say the highlights are over here. 
the shadows are here, then we have our blacks and our whites. So I'm going to adjust these to increase the tonal value to bring out as much detail in the image as possible. Now, because the shadows were so dark, I had to increase the shadows to plus 100. A lot of the times I won't do that, but for this particular image, I had to do that. Now, overall, the image is kind of flat, even though I have these whites and these blacks adjusted. And if I reset them, you can see that there's very little contrast in the image overall. So you can use your contrast slider here, or what I like to do is I like to use my whites and blacks to increase the contrast, because when you apply these edits opposite of each other, that adds contrast. Now let's take a look at my final edit here to see the actual settings that I did. And it's probably pretty close to what I did for the final edit. So minus 25, 100, plus 46, and minus 12. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually the other edits that I like to do are clarity and dehaze, which is also going to add contrast to your image. It's also going to give the impression that your image is sharper because these edits are applying the edits along the edges of different types of detail and it's adding the contrast and that gives the impression that it's sharper. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these basic edits from my final edit to here so we can see the progression of the edits from one step to the next. So I'm just going to select the basic edits here and synchronize. And these are, once we get it caught up here, these are my basic global edits for the tonal range. We still have a long ways to go to that final edit that I just showed you. And the next step is to apply a little bit more contrast because it is a little flat still. So what I like to do is I like to add a tone curve to add additional contrast by increasing again the whites and the highlights and darkening the shadows and the blacks versus using the slider. So this is more targeted along your tonal range versus just a linear adjustment. So right over here, we have our blacks and shadows. I'm going to click and drag this down. It's going to make the image darker. Our highlights and whites are over here. I'm going to click and drag this up to make those tonal values brighter. And when you do that again, it creates that contrast. You don't want to go too far. Otherwise, it's going to look fake. I like to create my edit so that it looks as natural at the time, or I should say as natural as possible to recreate what I saw at time of capture. Next, I like to add a vignette, usually around minus 10 or so, give or take a couple points here. And that's basically going to darken up the corners and the sides a little bit. And that helps bring our viewer into the image to help them see. I want to direct them to see what I want to be the primary subject in the image. In this case is the waterfall and the river. And then just kind of helps tone down those corners so they're not as hot and detract from our or vying for our attention, I should say. Next, I targeted the color mix to increase the saturation of the yellows and the greens. Right now, the greens, especially in the leaves, are too vibrant. So I'm going to lower those to around minus 20 or so, and I'm going to increase the yellows. And I think that's pretty close to what I had in my final edit as well. So that's the global edits. That's everything. But as you can see, the image is still not that great. It's kind of flat. It's a little boring. It's not that interesting. So I want to create a more dynamic, more inviting, more dramatic type of image that has a lot more character and draws our attention in different elements without overpowering the primary subject. Again, the waterfall and the water, and that's going to require local edits with masks. So let's jump back over to this image so we can see all of the masks that I applied. I believe there's six or seven different masks that I use to target the image to help it come alive because without it again it's very flat and boring so the first thing I wanted to target 
was this water. I'm going to go ahead and turn each one of these off so again we can see the progression of each one of these masks. So my system's a little slow right now. We've got too many things going on. So it's a little bit slow because I'm recording and I'm editing at the same time. And I apparently need to upgrade my system here. All right, one more. All right. So I targeted the water first. And if I press the letter O, that's going to show where I applied the overlay, which is in red here. Now, I had to apply a brush to this area to target that area. And then, if we take a look here inside, here's the brush to add the overlay. And then I had to apply another brush here to remove the overlay in different parts of the image where I didn't want it to apply those edits. In particular, you can see in the water here, we have some boulders that are sticking out of the water and I had to go in and remove the overlay or the mask from that area because I didn't want the edits to target that part of the image. And I also colored outside of the line, so I had to take care of that as well. Now, as far as the edits, I wanted to create or recreate the colors that I saw at the time that I created this image, which was kind of a aquamarine slash turquoise type color. And I achieved that by targeting the white balance. However, I do need to mention that it took me two to three days to finally get the right color because the first time I tried to fix the water, the color anyways, I clicked on this color box and I added a color tint. I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's perfect. And then I came back the next day and I was like, wow, that's awful. What was I thinking? So I removed the color by just adjusting the saturation here down to 0%. And then I targeted the point color here to try and fix the color of the water that way. And I was like, great, it looks good. Next day, no, it doesn't. It looks horrible. So I turned off the point color. I reset those settings. And then I went into the white balance. I'm like, okay, I want a turquoise color. So I adjusted the white balance to be more blue by adjusting that temp to minus eight. And because it also had a aquamarine greenish type color to it, I added more green, minus 29, and boom, I got the exact color that I wanted because that's the color that I saw at the time that I created it. So anytime you're editing something and you're not getting the results you want, step away for an hour or two, or maybe come back the next day like I did, and you'll be able to see the edit with a fresh set of eyes, and you'll see your mistakes and new ideas or new techniques that you apply or different edits you apply, I should say, will begin to reveal the edit that you want for your creative vision. All right, so I have the water done. My next part of the editing is to target different parts of the scene. So the next thing that I noticed was I'm missing detail in the waterfall, especially down here in the bottom. It's pure white. I don't want pure white. I want some of those details in there that I saw at the time of this photo shoot, which is why I targeted the waterfall with two brushes and I applied these edits right here, minus 0.18 on the exposure, just a tad darker and minus 67 on the highlights. Now, even though I adjusted the highlights globally, I still needed to target the waterfall to bring those details back. And you can definitely see there's more detail in there than there was before. And I also, I believe, targeted it up here at the top a little bit. So let's take a look. So there's my brush there, and you can see the before and the after, pure white. And now those details have been recovered. All right, so now I'm looking at the image. What can I do to make this better? The primary subject, again, waterfall, water. What is distracting my viewer, myself, from focusing on that primary subject? Well, to me, it was this large boulder right here, which is very bright. So I had to tone down the brightness level of that and shape the light around it to add a little bit of depth. So the first step was to apply a brush to the bowler and 
make it darker, which I did with my exposure slider here. I think that's all I did. Yes, that's all I did. So yes, it's darker. It's not as bright as it was before. So it's not vying for our attention as much as it was before, but it's still too bright and it's kind of flat. So I applied a linear gradient this time, which is, where is it? There it is right there. So my linear gradient, I applied 0.3 or three quarters of a stop darker and anything else? Nope, that's it. So that adds a little bit more depth to the, actually just to the boulder by applying that linear gradient and makes it a little bit darker and helps create a little bit more depth in the overall image as well. All right, now what do I need to do? Well, the background is kind of flat and boring and it's not exactly how I remember it. Even though the sunlight wasn't shining on it directly, there was a little bit more directional light in the overall scene and I need to recreate that by brightening up the background. So again, I used a brush to target the background and this time I adjusted the whites or that part of the tonal range to make it brighter and I also and I also added a little bit more contrast and sharpening with clarity and dehaze to make the background pop a little bit more and that's exactly what I got with those adjustments all right now what can I do to make this image better is there anything else that is drawing my eye away from the primary subject so after analyzing the image a little bit more I kind of realized that this log down here is kind of bright and competing for my attention so I targeted that again with a brush and I made some adjustments to shape the light around the log to give it more of a 3D type of lighting effect so it didn't look as flat because it, the amount of contrast was very low. So I wanted to add a little bit of contrast just to that area to give a little bit more definition to the log and to make it darker. So I adjusted the blacks and the whites again, applying these in the opposite of each other will create a little bit of contrast and I lowered the exposure a little bit and that removes that bright area that's kind of taking your eye away from the waterfall and the water and kind of leaning over there. It's not bad, but it's better when it's darker. Now I have these leading lines of the waterfall coming into the water and then the leading lines of the boulder here taking us to the log and then the log pointing in this direction brings us back through the image with this leading line over here but it was still missing something that I wish it had without having to add it to the image because again I like to edit my images based on how I saw them at the time that I created the image however I wanted to add a little bit more interest and make the image come alive a little bit more by adding some directional sunlight, which I did with my final mask. So if I turn this on and boom, there it is. All right, so much more interesting with the sunlight coming through that area versus not. And what I did was, is I applied a radial gradient, which you can see right there, but then I had to subtract from that gradient a little bit with a brush to remove it from the underside of the boulder here because it's not in direct sunlight or in the direct view of the sunlight. I had to remove it. Otherwise, it kind of looks fake, doesn't it? So I, that's why I used a brush to remove it from that area. So I prefer the sunlight versus not having the sunlight. What do you think? Do you like it with or without? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you found this photo editing tutorial valuable, please check out this photo editing playlist next to learn more pro editing tips. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.